Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Holly Golightly. This is Perfume Vegas, and I'm so happy that you've come back for another video. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my fragrances from Theodorus Calatinis, the collection that I have, the ones I like, what I think of them, the ones I don't like as much, what I think of them, and all that good stuff. Before we get into that, I do want to let you know that this is going to be my final upload for the month of September. Um, I know it's not a super long time, but I am recovering still from being ill, um, and I also am quite busy. I'm working a lot for a very special reason, and I can't wait to share that reason with you, but throughout the month of September, I just want to focus on taking care of myself and getting my work done as best as possible. I'll try to be posting on Instagram, but I will definitely at least be commenting on Instagram posts, um, but I may not be on YouTube really at all, so I may not be even replying to comments on YouTube or anything, so we'll just see. Um, I do have some things planned for October that I'm very excited to share with you, and I also have a series of videos for October, for an October series that I'm super excited to share, so please be on the lookout for those once the weather starts hitting, you know, the 70s here in Las Vegas. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to fall this year. So anyway, without further ado, let's talk about Theodorus Calatinis. So I currently own one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight fragrances from the brand. They're all the current collection, the Eau de Parfum, as well as the Eau de Toilette, um, which is vanilla. There is a brand new collection that uh, Theodorus Calatinis just released. It's the Golden Collection, and it consists of four fragrances that are extract to parfum, and they are priced a little bit higher than the regular price point, but they're also super, super quality-wise. They look amazing fragrance-wise. I think they're going to be amazing um, at the time I'm recording this. They are available on the Theodorus Calatini's website to purchase, and they are on sale, but um, I can't guarantee they're going to be on sale when you see this video, but if they're not, don't worry, because he does run sales pretty often, so you'll definitely have a chance to get your hands on those fragrances. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to say about the Golden Collection of fragrances is that um, Theodore did tell me that they, he was going to be doing a discovery set for the four fragrances, so if you don't want to have to order all four because <laughs> they're a little bit more pricey, there is going to be a discovery set. So with that, let's go to the Eau de Parfums and Eau de Toilettes. Um, so I am going to, there are a few of the Eau de, Par, Eau de Parfums that I do not have. There's two of the more masculine leaning fragrances that I don't have. And those two are the fragrance Sea God, which I'll put here, and the fragrance 1989, which I'm going to put here. Those two I don't have, unfortunately. Um, when I get the fragrances, when I purchase from Theodorus Calatini's, I do try to do a fairly large order because um, shipping to the U.S. runs about $25. So uh, those two were just at the bottom of my list for fragrances to get. So they'll be in the next order that I make whenever that is, um, whether it's, you know, in a week, a month, a couple months. I will get them, <laughs> but I don't have them right now. <coughs> there are also two that I have purchased that I owned that I did pass on um, because I am I kind of want to keep things because I do like to have the complete set or you know like I do like to be a completionist 
but I also knew that I would never wear them, and so I wanted to see if they could find a home with someone who would. So these two that I don't have any longer are the Fragrance Gardenia, which I'll put the notes on the screen here for you as well, um, but I'll read them as too. They're Powdery Vanilla, Jasmine Absolute, and Gardenia. This to me was a very powdery floral fragrance, a sort of dusty kind of fragrance. Um, it didn't really smell like gardenia, not how I imagine it, um, and it was just a little bit too powdery. Um, I just, I didn't have kind of a reaction. My nose, I sometimes get like where um, it tickles really bad in my nose and throat and I sneeze, like I'll sneeze over and over and over, um, and I was kind of having that reaction. Um, very unfortunate. Um, I, but I did pass that one on um, to a friend. And then the other one that I passed on was Aegean Salt and Citrus. And that one is right here. Um, this one, the only reason that I didn't keep it was because it was too much of that citrusy, salty, fresh fragrance. Um, that type of fragrance is not my particular style. I do like to have a little bit of woody or floral, something anchoring it. Um, the call-out notes for this are Aegean salt, lemon, and grapefruit. And it was just super citrusy, super, super, like, just marine, oceanic citrus. Beautiful fragrance, not to my taste. Um, I have other fragrances that are quite marine and are almost already leaning on that salty, citrusy edge. So, unfortunately, I decided not to keep this because it wasn't going to be used and just wasn't going to be loved. I did pass this one on to my sister. So, this is an opportunity for people who would never have purchased Theodora's fragrance for themselves to now have them in their collections, and I do love to be able to share that way. So that leaves the remaining fragrances that I personally own and are in my collection. So I am going to talk to you about them, starting from my least worn, probably, to my most reached for. Um, I just have to decide which ones are which. My least worn is likely to be Plumeria. Plumeria from Theodorus Calatinis. This has notes of sandalwood, Plumeria, and bergamot is the call out notes. And this fragrance, the base of this fragrance, I find is quite similar to Gardenia, where Gardenia was very powdery, too powdery, and almost irritating. Plumeria is a bit more fresh and waxy. So, yeah, it has that woody note and that slight waxiness of the florals to anchor it and make it a little bit more wearable, in my opinion. The floral note itself is not, again, not my personal idea of how Plumeria smells, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just unique. It's very different. Um but it's quite quite interesting and pleasant to wear. I especially find this a nice floral fragrance for warm weather, um, so I was able to wear it throughout the summer, and I enjoyed it. So that's probably my least reached for so far. Um, we'll definitely see going into winter, too. After that is Royal Orchid. This is another one that is a floral fragrance that's a little bit different than what I expected. And when it comes to orchid, you can't really expect anything because it's a fantasy note. You know, there's not really um, a scent to an orchid. So I didn't really know what to expect, but it wasn't what I was thinking would be. The call out notes for Royal Orchid are oud wood, patchouli, royal orchid, and cranberry. And to be honest, so what I what I get is oud and cranberry. <laughs> There's definitely a some patchouli, like that's always quite a prominent note. And there is a floral aspect, so that would be the orchid that I'm 
getting that's coming through. But this is probably the one for all of the feminine leaning fragrances or the floral fragrances. This is the one I would say is probably the deepest that has the most depth on the skin. Um, it's also very, very potent. <laughs> you, you do not need to overspray Royal Orchid. You will be smelled a mile away if you do. Honestly, two sprays on the neck, two sprays on the wrists is all I need, and I'm set if I'm wearing this fragrance for the day. So that is Royal Orchid. I, too, tend to reach for this more for special occasions, so it doesn't get used as often. And then the next fragrance, I also tend to reach for more only on special occasions, although I really like this one. The next one is Lily. So again, another floral feminine leaning scent. This particular one though smells like lilies. This one has the lily fragrance that I recognize. Unlike Gardenia and Plumeria where I didn't recognize those florals in there, this one I absolutely do. Lily, it's got lily, it's got patchouli. Let's see. The call it notes patchouli, vanilla, lily, and exotic fruits. So yeah, it's got lily. The patchouli and the vanilla combine a bit in the base to make it a bit of a rich sort of woody fragrance. And then you have those sweet fruity top notes. Look at just, I mean, just look at the juice. This is the juice of lily. This is the juice of royal orchid. These are the two darkest and they're stunning. They're stunning. I think Lily is, for me, a bit more wearable just because I don't tolerate Oud as well, but these two are for special occasions. Just amazing. Stunning. They're stunning. So then the next fragrance that I reach for probably medium often is going to be the Eau de Toilette Vanilla. This particular one is a solo note type of fragrance. So this vanilla is calling out patchouli, vanilla, and caramel. And this is a beautiful scent. Um, it's For an eau de toilette, it lasts for ages and it projects very well. And for a solo note type of vanilla fragrance, it's actually one that I can wear on my skin and it's not sugary, sweet, sickening, overwhelming, like vanilla. Um, super sweet scents that have vanilla and caramel in them can be a bit too much for me, but with the patchouli, patchouli has a nice um, job to do in sweet fragrances by holding them down, by grounding them. That's why in a lot of very sweet fragrances, you will find a, a patchouli note. Um, it works. It works well. If you don't like patchouli, you know, that's a problem <laughs> because it is noticeable, but I don't think that it's overwhelming. It's not so strong of a patchouli that it takes over the fragrance. The vanilla, uh, yeah, the vanilla and the sweet kind of buttery caramel scent are totally, totally in charge here. So the next, oh my God, I didn't grab a luring fig. Hold on. Okay. I found a luring fig. I just had seen it on here and I was like, where is it? Had to search through so much stuff because I didn't put it where I put all of the rest of my Theodore's Calatini's perfume. So don't know what was up with that. So anyway, after vanilla, what I reach for next is I Am Beautiful. So this is another feminine leaning fragrance and it really, it really is beautiful. Um, just like the name says, I Am Beautiful has notes of cranberry. It has notes of rose damascena. It has notes of amber. It has patchouli. It's sweet. It's rosy. It's warm. It's earthy. It's phenomenal. If it didn't have the cranberry note, it would probably be just another like nice 
amber rose scent, but that added tartness of the cranberry just like takes it takes it up a notch and this is going to be so good for fall. I just got this one last spring and I loved it in spring, but this is going to be amazing for fall. So that is I am beautiful. Oh, and now we're getting down. So these are the last four of my collection. I have nine in total, not eight because I was missing the luring fig. These are the last four, and these four, like, between these four, it could really go any way. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and talk about Alluring Fig next, just because I pulled it out. I've mentioned it. I love this fragrance. This fragrance, too, like... None of them, like, if it, I rotate through them so often. I have six out right now that I'm using that I'm not making, like, a super dent in any of them. But this one I put a good, like, I put some use into it. I just got this one in the early parts of August, I believe. So, or maybe it was mid-August. So, a luring fig smells like the fig leaf. If you've ever smelled a green fig fragrance, if you've smelled a crisp green fig leaf note, that's what you're going to smell when you spray Alluring Fig right off the top. It is so green, so fresh. It's like you're putting your nose directly onto the fig leaf and inhaling it. And then as you have it on your skin and it begins to dry down, the sweetness comes out. It's so green and fresh and then the sweetness comes out. And it's called, the call out notes are fig leaf, fig and creamy vanilla. And that creamy sweetness of the fig and the vanilla, that's what you get in the dry down. This is not a beast when it comes to performance, but it's so good on the skin. It lasts for ages and it develops like you wouldn't believe. A Loring Fig is, I, I can't pick a favorite, but this is probably my most favorite of the newest ones to my collection. It's so good. So then we have my next most worn, and for that is going to be Coffee Addict. This is probably the most famous fragrance from Theodorus Calatini's for good reason. This is an amazing, amazing photorealistic coffee scent. There is nothing else like it. I've, I've never smelled anything else like it. I, I can't even... It's like a cup of coffee, brewed fresh espresso that you've pumped some creamy, like whipped cream or vanilla syrup and cream. Oh, I love coffee. I love tea, but I love coffee. And this makes me want to go have a cup of coffee every single time I drink it or I drink it every single time I smell it. It's so good. The call out notes are cacao, vanilla, caramel, and coffee. And it is just like a beautiful, like a caramel macchiato or some beautiful coffee that's just pre presented to you in like <laughs> the most delicious form. Um, my bottles, you'll notice, all look different because I would they were like in the transitional phase when I was purchasing. So the bottles should all appear like this now when you buy the Eau de Parfums. But this is mine from my coffee addict. Oh, like smelling it again. I haven't smelled it for a little while. Oh my God. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I'm definitely bringing this one out for fall going to be so good for fall. Then we have 
my two that are just the ones that I reach for the most. I don't really know if one's a favorite versus the other. I think that the last, this I'll save this one for last. So then we have Jasmine of Athens. So this fragrance has a beautiful scent of jasmine. It smells like jasmine in the air. It's not indolic. It's not sweet or sickly. It's not kind of that like almost smoky, heavy indolic jasmine. It's not like that. It's fresh. It's like it's floating. It's in the air. It's in full bloom. It's rich and beautiful. But then it also has citrus. And it has, I think, a woody note in the base. Let me look. The call-out notes for Jasmine of Athens, vanilla, Jasmine Absolute, and Tiare Blossom. It's rich. It's fragrant. It's floral. But it's not heavy. It doesn't weigh you down. This one is one that I have put away for the fall and winter, even though it's not super cold here. To me, this scent is spring. This scent is summer. This scent is femininity in the, you know, beautiful springtime. It's so pretty. It's one of the prettiest, prettiest floral fragrances I've ever smelled. And then, last but not least, the one that I think I would quantify as my personal favorite, if I could, if I had to, if somebody was like, you either lose them all or you pick a favorite, like, okay, okay, okay. Like, and for me, that favorite is Mentor. This is actually one of the masculine-leaning fragrances, but to me, it's very gender-neutral. You wouldn't, I don't think that there would be anyone who couldn't wear a mentor. Um, on a man, I think this would smell so sexy, just like so warm and so like welcoming. Like, you know, you want to, this is going to sound weird. As a female, you want to like hold a man and feel like you're being like held, right? But Sometimes you don't. <laughs> Mentor feels like that masculine hug, like in a bottle. Um, it smells so much. It's got a quite uncanny resemblance to my favorite candle from the Harlem Candle Company, which is Langston. They're not identical, but there is a definite comparison that could be made there. Um, the call-out notes for Mentor are amber, vetiver, and vanilla. So it's just warm, beautiful, sexy, comforting, seductive, classy. Like, I, honestly, this is one that I think you could wear in any occasion, in any weather, for any reason. You don't need to be any particular to wear Mentor. It's so good. I love it. I love it. That's like the dream man smell right there too. It's so beautiful. So anyway, you guys, that is my collection of Theodorus Calatini's fragrances. If you have any questions about how any of these scents perform or what they smell like on the skin, please let me know. If you have any questions about the new releases, I mean, let me know. I can always find out through firsthand experience or asking questions. And let me hear your thoughts. Have you tried these fragrances? Which ones have you tried? What do you think of them? I know there are some people out there who are fanatics of the brand, and I know a lot of people have got their nose on Coffee Addict, so let me know if you have, and otherwise, I will see you on the next video. Bye!